Welcome everybody. Good morning. And it's a privilege to be here. I'm hoping that you all can hear me. Um, here we have with us the woman, the educator, the woman with a voice, the woman who speaks out for women and a woman who, even though I've never met her, but just from up the road as persons would say from Gilmarnock. So we have this afternoon or still morning, we have Nadine Spence, an educator, social and political commentator and women's rights activist. She has interest in our young people's leadership development and currently develops and delivers leadership programs for graduate, for undergraduate and graduate students at the University of the West Indies, Mona. Also a lady of, with many accolades behind her name, she has served as a contributing member on a number of national committees. And she also served on the Partnership for Jamaica, which was chaired by the Prime Minister, Portia Simpson Miller. She currently serves as the National Gender on the National Gender Advisory Council. Miss Nadine Spence is a political analyst and social commentator who has been a guest on all of Jamaica's leading television and radio programs, sharing her views and expertise on matters related to Jamaica's socioeconomic, political, and cultural reality. Now here this afternoon, we have the woman with, who is not afraid to use her voice, Miss Nadine Spence. So um, I want to say thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure to speak to people from my neck of the woods. Um, as you know, I, I, I grew up, I was born in Black River Hospital, grew up in Kilmarnock and went to school in Black River and Kilmarnock and now, and Bethlehem, all in St. Elizabeth. And um, uh, yeah, my hometown. And so I, I'm happy for this initiative and for the opportunity to speak with you. And today we're talking about I said, women's lives matter. So I'll begin by talking about a woman who I uh, honor every day, my mother, who, who um, I grew up with in Kilmarnock and who, you know, sold her wares, her farming products that my father would have farmed in the new market. At first it was, it was the old new market and then it was Louisville new market. Um, and for years, that's what my mother did as she tried to educate her children and to take care of us on a daily basis. And to use that again as a backdrop of my conversation, a lot of the concerns that I now have about Jamaica's women are located in my understanding of how women in that particular region of St. Elizabeth have had to live their lives and have had to come to terms with their role as mothers, as citizens, and, and just, just as people trying to negotiate and eke out a space for themselves. Um, I also have an overwhelming amount of concern for the women who are located in Northwest St. Elizabeth, Newmarket, that area, uh, because I recognize that part of the, but a huge challenge that women in rural Jamaica face is the fact that development for rural Jamaica um, doesn't happen at the same pace as development in areas outside of rural Jamaica. I remember a couple of years ago when I heard that um, Louisville Market was not operating in the same way it used to operate when Miss You from Kilmarnock, my mother, used to go to new market on a Wednesday to sell food. Um, and a lot of people would know that for women, the marketplace is important. And so I want to ask that question, yeah? I don't know if a lot of people have thought about it. How have the lives of the women in new market changed with the movement of the market? Um, I, 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 it's a question I'm very interested in because I know for the women from Kilmarnock and from other communities, the market was a critical survival point. It was how women fed their families. And so I wonder, 
um, how that particular economic activity, how women have responded and what women are now doing <coughs> to sustain themselves and their families. I don't know that it's a question that is, that is at the forefront of the minds of our leaders as they navigate their policy and, and develop policies and procedures um, to help people to survive. But it's, I think it's a question that we need to answer in respect of how the lives of women are being impacted by the economic realities of our country. And that as situations change that we might not think about and women have to adjust because they have to feed families and take care of their, their children and they have to take care of the elderly and that primarily they take care of those who are ill that women have to find ways to maintain the, the care responsibilities that have been assigned to them. Um, so I, I also want to talk about the cost of care, the cost of care to women's lives. Um, in rural communities, things tend to move very slowly. Uh, in rural communities, like my rural community in Kilmarnock, um, it would appear that things don't change as much as in other urban centers. And so because there is an assumption that things don't change and rural life is simple, a lot of thought isn't given to how people in rural Jamaica are making do with life, how they are negotiating their lives, how people are, are just surviving from day to day. So, one of the things that I have been thinking about again is we hear a lot of talk about climate change. We hear a lot of talk about the environment. We hear a lot about the weather getting hotter. We hear a lot about, you know, sometimes the rain, it rains for longer and there is more flooding. And we know that in New Market, flooding and the weather is an important part of our existence. So the question I want to ask, I've raised one question already about how women's lives have been changed by the fact of the market. How have the lives of women and their families been impacted by the weather? And by what is happening in terms of when, for example, New Market flood, and when there is not enough water, and when there are, how are women in New Market and other areas of, of St. Elizabeth surviving with this uncertainty around the climate and around water. How are you, how are they surviving? And how are we thinking about how we plan with their survival in mind? So those are two issues I've raised that I think are critical for people in, in New Market, Kilmarnock and its environment and violence to think about market. And we talk about market. Remember, we're not just talking about goods, we're talking about the economy and talking about how people get money and how people survive. And we talk about climate change. It, it's not just water. We're talking about crops and how the, the people who farm. And when I was growing up, men were primarily the farmers and the, 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 the goods were taken to women who would then take them to market on donkeys or on their heads or, with, or on vans in the communities. I suspect that a lot of people are not doing that anymore and that the nature of that activity has changed. Um, but how has that how have women had to adjust their lives for that reality another situation that i wanted to think about because this was very real to me as a uh, how, this was very real to me as a youngster it was transportation now two things happened to me in my in my young life that changed the course of my life one is i i was going to festival from kilmarna college school when i was eight years old and the bus was so packed that my kidney got damaged. And so um, they never had the equipment at Black River Hospital to treat me. So my mother and sister, Sister Yvonne is on, they had to take me to Bustamante Children's Hospital where I was hospitalized for over two months, I think. The question that I think a lot of people perhaps ask is, you know, how did you manage? Because it meant that as an eight year old, I never got visits on, on a regular basis because my parents were in St. Elizabeth, I was in Kingston. You know, that trans, I remember my mother telling the story about how difficult it was for her to get back to Kilmarnock the night after she finally was able to speak to the doctor in the, in the, in the, in the, at, at Black River Hospital, that she literally had to beg a ride on a truck to get back home. 
and how difficult it was for her. She had to rely on the kindness of strangers to get to Kingston to visit me. So the question is, how, how are we thinking through how women need transportation? And how are we thinking through how access to transportation or, or lack of access to transportation is impacting how women live? I remember even this whole business of how women had babies, you know, in order for you to get to Black River, you had to make sure that you book uh, a taxi from very early if you went into labor at nights so that you could access transportation to Black River Hospital to have your baby. And what that meant for the woman who was nine months pregnant and who had to be worrying about how am I going to get to hospital? Those are real issues that women in, country, in, in spaces like ours um, have to navigate that women in other parts of the country might not have to nav navigate. And so how does transportation impact women's lives? Access to transportation or when transportation is entirely private as rural people in rural Jamaica cannot count on the state in respect of the provision of transportation. It's, the, it's private individuals through the provision of taxis or buses who they have to rely on. But there are some people who rely on transportation in such critical ways. Getting to school for us from Kilmarnock to Black River was such a huge challenge uh, at, in those days. And I don't know if it still happened now. You had a shift system. And so it meant we had to be up from as early as five o'clock to walk the two miles, to drive the 17 miles, to walk the one mile to Black River. Um, by the time we got to school, we were dead tired. How do children function under those conditions? And how, and how, when you came back from school again, having to do the same thing, what that meant? Of course, now you have a school in, in Louisville, so it might make things a little bit easier for people in that situation, but we have to think about these individual things. This event is sponsored by Ev McLilly Tees. Visit evmaclillytees.com for the finest teas and herbs Source from mainly organic small farms around the world. You can contact them by WhatsApp 347 995 6556. That's 347 995 6556. And and before I, I, I get to, I guess, my summer point, I want to talk about, um, just, to, I have to talk about this one. One of the challenges I faced as a teenager was having a period and then going to school. Yes, I'd noticed people head raised up. Yes, having a period is a public conversation that women must have. I remember though that I had bad periods. I was subsequently diagnosed with, with endometriosis, but at the time it was just that you, however we describe having a period and it was a private thing. But I remember one of the things that used to happen is that my mother used to come, my sister, I had a sister in the hospital at the time who had broken her leg on the way to school, a car had hit her. And I remember my mother coming to the hospital to visit my sister who was in there for a long time and seeing me on the bed more than once. Why? Because I would get so sick at school that I had to go into the hospital. And then after a while, she chose to keep me from school because she knew I would eventually end up in the hospital. But people handled this as a private matter. It wasn't a private matter because it meant that I was losing days in school. It meant that my education was, impact, was being impacted. And it, it, it meant that this woman didn't she didn't know how to deal with this fact of her daughter getting so sick and no doctor gave serious attention to what my condition was they probably gave me some painkillers and then sent me back home to face the next reality next month but the truth is it was a problem and there are problem problems too with now in jamaica we recognize that girls lose days in school because they do not have access to sanitary napkins right those are things for us to consider that becomes important as we discuss policies and as we discuss leadership decisions. Are we taking into consideration, taking into consideration women's lives and how women are engaging reality and the impacts of 
different situations from the market to access to pads to transportation to how a woman gets to the hospital to have her baby how those critical decisions that are that are very personal to women's lives how those decisions have to become public conversations so that we so that we can plan for everybody so that those who lead can leave lead in the best interest of all of our citizens you know one of the things i think that we have to now consider is is the other issues that women face over their life cycles over their life cycle like I spoke about the period, I spoke about childbearing. Um, the other things we are not talking about are issues that are critical to the survival of Jamaicans in the workforce. More women are dying of lifestyle diseases, like diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, can different forms of cancer. And that is because women are not getting medical intervention early enough because uh, people have to find it so difficult to access specialized care. So you might have a general practitioner in Black River, and you know if you have money, you can go access the general practitioner, but people need different kinds of intervention. So is there, a, for example, how do women get access to a gynecologist so they can pay attention to womb health and breast health and other kinds of specialist treatment that women will need over their life cycle? who is making those plans and who is taking those things into consideration and who is having those conversations with the women in our neck of the woods where we come from who is helping them to negotiate their health challenges and health risks as they seek to improve their life chances those are critical conversations though they're not those are not private conversations to be spoken over in hushed tones in your bedroom those become important decisions for public policy consideration all of our politicians and leaders of different institutions ministries departments and agencies need to have the well-being and lives of women on their lips and if women as voters, women as political actors, don't put these issues on the agenda, then they are not going to go on the agenda. And one of the things that we have been taught is that we should be ashamed to say these things. We should be embarrassed to speak of having a period or of the, 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 the private, the, the, the intricacies of childbirth or of menopause or of um, all of the things that happen to our bodies as they change as women we've been taught to keep those private and so when we go to the political meeting what the political representative speaks about is the road water telephone light all of those things but we don't put the things that are critical to our survival as women on the agenda and those things need to be on the political agenda so that leadership in the country can change and also operate in our interest child care has to be on the, on the agenda you know it's not okay that women in certain parts of jamaica can only access child care if they ask their neighbor to help them out i remember when I had my son, I had my son when I was 17 years old. And if I had to leave my son to go to boarding school, which was Bethlehem Teachers College. And so my mother had to be the child, the caregiver. But when she needed to go to the market or to go to Black River, she had to leave my son with a neighbor if they were available. If not, you know, she had to travel with him wherever she went because the government or whoever makes no provisions for child care for people in our neck of the woods. And so we have to think about, you know, do we deserve that kind of intervention? Do our lives matter enough for us to put these issues on the agenda? Or is it, are these things personal to us, even though it impacts all of us? Even though if you put 50 women in a room, 5,000 women in a room, these are the issues they share. 
are they just personal to one woman? Yeah? And so I, I, I know you've told me to go on until 12 and I don't want to go beyond that time. I don't know if you have question and answer, but I think you've said, you know, women's lives matters. All of our lives matter. All the things that make up our lives matter. All the things that make up our lives matter. And the things that we think are private and should be kept confidential to women, no, they shouldn't be. They should become points of legislation. They sh policy should be implemented. We should bring them to the political meetings. We should bring them to the community meetings. I, our concerns are not just with the state of roads and with when the road one bush. Ah. Women's lives in its to in their totality matter, and women should not be afraid to put these issues on the agenda. All right, thank you. So you 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 have touched on so many topics that I would really like to dive into, and to okay. trash it out in here in a real discussion. But we don't have time because we are running into the other speakers' time. Um, if you can join us back here at three thirty then we could facilitate some discussions around some of the points that you raise. They're very critical. They're very, very important points that are worth discussing, worth hearing from people about, you know, how did you break your ribs because you were in a, in a, in a bus that's, uh, well, you didn't say, was it your ribs? Because my kidney, a, my kidney was damaged ram, because ram, I was in a bus that was too bad. Yes. Rammed up in a bus like that. Oh my God, that is, that is major abuse, major, major abuse. But and that that was that is this that was the state of transportation in that section of Saint Elizabeth because you never had enough. And and you know the thing about the period and all of these things. These are really issues that I would love us to have a discussion about. And there are people in the group who are watching. I'm pretty sure they would want to join in this conversation. So um, are you able to come back here at um, 3.30? I have a pack day, but I'll try. I'll All right. try. So if you come back at 3.30, we could, we could continue this discussion. Very, okay. very right. important discussion. I want to thank you, though, for making the time. I saw that you had your work thing running into this, and it was difficult, but you squeezed and made it possible to have this, this presentation. And we, we really, really appreciate it. And we need to have more dialogue around women issue and the things that affect women. The market, as you said, that was the lifeblood of, of, of the, the, um, the old new market. What is it like now? You know, these are, these are really points to think about. So yeah, we'll talk about that later. All right? Okay, all right. Thanks Thank for the invitation. You so much. Thank you so very okay, much. Bye -bye. Great. Um, ladies and gentlemen who are watching, we are going to take a break, a short break, because I want to break this video and then um, start a new video. So I'm going to sign out and then sign back in. Those of you who have the Zoom code to come on and perform, the, the Zoom code will still work. I just want to refresh this video so it doesn't go on too long. Um, so I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to sign in again. And then you guys who are going to perform, you can come right on, okay? And you guys who are watching, please um, come back because we're gonna just 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 end this video here and start a new video. All right? Thank you so much for being such a gracious audience, and to the guests who have been here earlier and spoke, we 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 are all you know just revved up all of these things that are coming up, all of these points, all of these recommendations, all of these um, matters for discussion, they're truly worth us exploring them today. And so I want you to come right back here, just grab your lunch and run back inside the, 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 um, the place. So we continue this wonderful, wonderful um, Impact Youth Leadership Summit 2021. My name is Evadne. I really thank you for being here and I am very grateful to be your host for today. So we'll be right back on within five minutes. Okay, thank you.
This event is sponsored by F. Maglili Teas. Visit fmaglilities.com for the finest herbal teas sourced from mainly small organic farms all over the world. To make your purchase, go to evmaclilly.com, that's E-V-M-C-L-I-L-L-E-Y.com, or WhatsApp 347-995-6556, that's 347-995-6556.